Good afternoon, Springmore residents, Springmore Board of Directors, Springmore Management. I'm Julia McCullers, President of the Residents Association. I'm pleased to see each and every one of you here. It's wonderful to see people in person, and I am looking out into a sea of masks. How beautiful you are, how wonderful. People were concerned that while you were eating and drinking the refreshments that you might become disobedient, but you have not. Thank you very much. I don't know of any group that would be so uh, obedient to rules. Whether you are here in the auditorium or watching on channel 1341, we welcome you to the September business meeting of the Springmore Residents Association. And as you anticipate, I, and as you were looking at the agenda, I will read the fire rules. In the event of a fire alarm, when it sounds, please remain in the auditorium and stay seated. Should there be a need to evacuate, a Springmore staff member will direct you on how to leave in an orderly fashion. Please remember not to use the elevators and to go to a red pole once you are outside. The first thing on the agenda is the nominating committee for the officers for the Residents Association in the year 2022. And I will turn that over to the chair of the nominating committee, Susan Walton. Thank you, Julia. Uh, the nominating committee met several times and came up with what we felt like was a, a very good slate of officers for next year, and they have all agreed to serve if elected. As you all know, the, the bylaws call for uh, the, the slate to be pre presented in September, and in October, if someone from the association would like to nominate someone else in a as opposed to the people who have been proposed, then they may do so at October, and we will vote in November then on who would be the officers for next year. If there are no new nominations in November, then the slate will be accepted by proclamation if there are no additional nominations. Anyone that you would wish to nominate has to agree to serve in that position before they are nominated. Um, the members of the committee this year were myself, Betty Bridgers, Gail Jens, Betty Moore, and Barbara McGee. Uh, the slate of nominees will be posted on the bulletin boards at the mailbox here in North Village and also across the street in South Village. The officers the candidates for next year are President Peg Bedini, Vice President Dave Waters, Secretary Janet Carter, Directors Carol Bryant, A.J. Gardner, Barbara Smith, and Jim Bundy. I will look forward to, to hearing any new nominations next month, and if there are any, to then in, inducing this group of people to be our new officers for next year. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Next, a message from the Endowment Committee. Alan Page is chair. Alan had a medical appointment today, and so Peg Bedini is going to give the endowment message. On behalf of the Endowment Committee, I just want to remind you that this is the midst of our once a year campaign for funds. The official ending date of the campaign is this Friday, so I ask you to please consider helping your neighbors by making a contribution. It doesn't matter the size of your contribution, but what we like to see is the feel that everyone is taking part. So as many of you as possible, please do that. You received a packet 
in your uh, residence and you can get the information from that. If you have any further questions, you can certainly call the business office. I see I'm next on the agenda. Yes, Shall I just go ahead? Uh, just for your information, we have a very interesting program planned for our October resident meeting. Uh, the health, what's the official title? What? The Health Center Committee, it just got a new name, is going to be responsible for the program. Susan Walton is the chair, and the program will be kind of about how we as residents are able to use the health center, things we should know about Stewart Health Center, and some of the people involved you will hear from. So it certainly is something that should be very useful to all of us, and I hope to see you all then. Thank you. The Residents Association is a lot of things to a lot of people. One thing it is not is a rule-making or law-making group. Our job is to listen, to react, and to, to direct the information that we think is important to the management. A week ago today, the executive committee and the management committee drafted a document, very short, because of a situation that has caused many residents concern. This has been directed, as I said, to the management. And this is what our statement said. The executive committee and management advisory committee of the Springmore Residents Association urges Springmore management to do what is necessary to provide residents the level uh, to do the management to do what is necessary to provide residents the level of safe, reliable elevator service that is essential to a community such as ours. Reliable elevator service at Springmore is an absolute necessity. Erratic service is unacceptable and must be promptly, prom must be promptly and competently remedied. Now, let's do something a little bit lighter and let's draw for the door prizes provided by First Citizens. Look at your ticket, please. Draw one, Brandon. Let's see, you got seven, seven, three, five, six, zero, seven. Aladine, okay. Aladine Rogers. One more. All right. Three one six four six eight. Four six eight. Let's try again. Six three two. 
Okay, there's a winner right in front of Elodie. Thank you. Now on to the big business of the day. Semi-annual meetings with the directors, management, and residents are required by the North Carolina Department of Insurance. Another such meeting, similar to the one that we're going to have today, was held in February. Some weeks ago, residents were sent letters from the Management Advisory Committee, headed by Bill Marley, requesting that everyone, every resident, submit questions in advance to spring more management. Chairman Marley forwarded those questions to management for discussion at this meeting, our business meeting for the fall of 2021. I now turn the meeting over, well, chaplain announcements. Okay, all right, sorry. Chaplain announcements. I have to check the spelling on chaplain there, I believe. Uh, old English teacher habit. Okay, please. Lori. Good afternoon. I represent Juliana and myself in announcing a few events in October that we wanted to make you aware of. October 3rd is a Sunday, and we are having a blessing of the animals that has been successful um, in the last couple years. That in South Village, it will be at 2 p.m. back near the croquet court, and at 4 p.m. in North Village, we will have it in the breezeway. We are also beginning another book study um, entitled The Return of the Prodigal Son. And Henry Nowen was inspired by Rembrandt's painting of the prodigal son. And there will be themes of homecoming, affirmation, and reconciliation. So we are looking forward to studying that with you. And that will be meeting in both North Village and South Village. Juliana will lead it here in North Village on Fridays, and I will lead it on Mondays. Check your pathways for that. And lastly, just to put a date in your head, we will be having the annual memorial service on Wednesday, November 3rd, and that will be at 2 p.m. Thank you. I now turn the meeting over to Brandon Hare, Executive Director, who will respond to the questions submitted earlier by residents and will also introduce representatives from management who will discuss the 22 budget and other business matters. Brandon? Okay, sorry about that. I was going <clears> to <throat> see if we can get a little air flowing in here. A couple of people said it was stuffy, so <clears throat> I'm going to get that going for y'all. All right. Good to see everybody. can't remember if we met in person in March of 19, or was it, was it, um, or was it uh, September of 18? <laughs> Do y'all remember? Or, I mean, 20. Excuse me, it wasn't 18. Did we meet in 20 at all, live? Yeah. Okay. I didn't think so. So it's the first time we've had a semi-annual meeting. I think, and um, golly, I think since probably March of twenty, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, but it's good to see everybody back. We do have a nice crowd. So I have a. I want to introduce a couple of people. Then I've got a couple announcements that I'm going to make, and then I'm going to answer two questions that were submitted by um, by residents in the Management Advisory Committee, and then I'm going to have Philip do his. Um, uh, do his presentation. Normally we'll um, answer the questions afterwards, but um, since we only had two, I want to talk about those first, and then Philip's got a good detailed presentation I think will be much more interesting. So first of all, I want to introduce our board members that are here. Um, I know in the back we have um, Mr. Ernest Carraway. If you could stand up, Mr. Carraway. And uh, we have Bill Baxley. Yeah. 
And thanks, and Mr. Um, Callaway, Mr. Albert Callaway is here, Springmore resident. And we also have two um, members on our endowment board that are present. They're both Springmore residents, Mr. Bill Marley here and uh, Miss Susan Walton. So I want to thank you. Oh, Mary Ann, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and if you can stand up, Mary, Miss Mary Ann Freeman, she's on our Springmore board as well. So, yeah, thank you all for being here. Um, I really appreciate it. It's good to see everybody. Um, also, from our um, management, we have a Kyle Dilday. I think everybody knows Kyle. And then David Ammons. Um, I think everybody knows David as well. I'm going to make sure that I introduce them. Um, all right. So, a couple of fun things first. I don't know if you all know, but um, Holly, who's our business office manager, she had her baby yesterday. So, we'll have to, yeah, that's really cool. I know. It's <laughs> Yeah, she, um, she's really excited. She sent a, a picture. Her and her husband are doing great. It's a little boy. His name's Lim. Um, he was a little early, but he's, uh, he was over six pounds, so he's doing fine. Her parents are down from New York visiting, so, um, so she'll be out for 12 weeks. So she'll be, she'll be out for a while, but we've got a, we've got a good plan. We have uh, somebody in the health center that's helping a couple of hours a day. So, so, um, and uh, Tracy's working on the campaign for the endowment committee, so everything should run smooth. But uh, yeah, we'll, po we'll get a picture of Holly's baby up here soon, but I did want to announce that. Um, the other thing I wanted to make sure that everybody knew was um, we're not in outbreak status in the health center um, Ms. Pegg was Ms. Pegg was nice enough to um, give me a heads up before the meeting that on the in the News Observer today it had all the had all the places that were in outbreak status. Um, we were in outbreak status in the health center. That's the only area that's considered an outbreak status because it's a licensed area. So if we had two or more cases in independent living, it wouldn't be considered an outbreak status. Um, it's only in the health center, um, and that's when we have to stop visitation. So we had to stop visitation for 28 days, but that ended on September 7th. But I've learned for the past 18 months, uh, keep them keeping up with the charts and getting off that list is quite time delayed. So some of these communities you may see on here or facilities, they may already be off. Sometimes the numbers are skewed. Just going to see we have like four up there now and we have none. Um, so just FYI, we're not in outbreak status, and um, that's why families can visit normal now. If we were, we couldn't, and we couldn't do that for 28 days. So no cases right now, no, no outbreak status. Um, another thing I want to talk about was new flooring for South Village. That was a real hot topic before the elevators became shaky. So... Um, <laughs> So that was really hot, and uh, so we um, we had that um, scheduled to be installed um, on the 15th and the 22nd. Um, I believe we got a memo out last week um, reminding everybody of that. It took a while to get the products in. Um, with everything with COVID, it's just a delay. So, so we finally have that, and we have it scheduled. So that will be on track for the 15th and the 22nd over in South Village. Um, we... Uh, Mr. Waters will be happy to know this. We um, purchased a new evacuation chair that um, that will make things a little easier in case we have to get somebody up the stairs. Um, we did have to do that last week um, manually, and that's a foolproof way to do it for sure. And uh, that's, that, that, that will kind of never never go out of style or go out of something that you want to do is having those manual lifts, but having a battery-operated battery one, um, it does make it much more convenient for, for people to have to get somebody back up the stairs. Um, so we've got that. Um, Mr. Waters? Yes, sir? You got a picture of it. All right, good. All right. Glad Jacob Jacob wheeled um, Charles in today in my office, and uh, he was strapped to that thing and said, "Yeah, he just pulled me up the stairs." So, so I so I know it works. So, so I'm glad we have that. I put that in the last memo. Hope that would you know give everybody a sense of mind that we have an an easier way to get people back up. Um, and that is all the updates I had. Um, so, as we as Ms. McCullers mentioned earlier, um, the management advisory um, received two questions. So I'm going to answer those two questions. I'm not going to take any questions from the floor because I want to make sure that we protect the integrity of the MAC and we always ask people to admit it. it <laughs> submit these in advance. So I've had several people after the deadline ask me about answering questions, and I've, I've answered those personally. I actually met with Mr. Raymond Thursday for about an hour. He had about four or five questions. I'm happy to do that with any of y'all. 
So if there's any questions you want to talk about tomorrow, Wednesday, you just let me know. But for the sake of time and the sake of how the MAC runs their, their meetings and staying without policy, I'm only going to answer the questions that were submitted. So I'm going to read the first one. Well, let's just get this one done. Let's do the second one. Let's do the elevator. All right, so I'm going to read this, and I'll give you all the latest updates. So, um, so this was submitted. Um, I'm not sure if I have a name on this one or not. Oh, well. All right, it says, the, and we already know this. This is a little older, but um, the right elevator in Valley Building has, been out, has not been operating properly and out of order very often. It is fixed one day, and a day or two later it's out of service. This affects Creedmoor and Valley Apartments, plus people from North Village who come to the Wellness Center, Bistro, and Dining Room. Since it can't seem to be fixed, will it be replaced? Some people are afraid to go on it. So, and I understand. Yeah, that's, that, that's for sure a fear. Um, but I want, to, I want to make sure that everybody knows where we're at and what we're doing. Um, so I've sent out several memos. Over the past few weeks, one as late as Thursday, updating everybody where we were with the elevator. So, um, so I, re I responded with what was wrong and how they fixed it. And also some preventative maintenance things that we're going to do, such as changing the oil to help it from overheating, to extend the life of it, and then help with the performance of the elevator. So, um, so we've done that. And, um, and I've been as frustrated as y'all have about this. I don't mean this in a bad way, but I don't want to deal with this any more than y'all do. <laughs> I, I can assure you, I, I don't want, when y'all are inconvenienced or scared or afraid of something, that falls back on me. And I like helping y'all with that, but I don't want anybody to feel like that. And, um, and I don't want to have to worry about it either. Um, but I know what we have to do to get it fixed, and I know that we have ways to help people. So I feel confident in that. But I've relayed all of this to the company we use. I had a good meeting with the branch manager and the lead uh, technician last week. They actually offered to come here today. And I declined them to come just due to time. And um, also it affects, affects a lot of people, but it's about half, half the residents here. It really affects day to day. So I thought it would be nice if they come out a separate time and they can do a presentation or answer any questions y'all may have um, after this meeting. But they did offer to come, um, but, I, but again, I, I did decline them to come. Um, there was actually a little glitch this morning with Elevator 11. Y'all may, may or may not have even known that. Um, but there was a little glitch, and as soon as I emailed to find out what it was, I got a, a response back in less than three minutes. And um, I'm going to read you this response. You can hear straight from the horse's mouth here. It says, car 11 had stalled on what is called a low oil timer. This is really a relay that trips that the elevator does not come out of the pit after five seconds of a run demand. This is typically a relay sticking issue. Dean, who's a technician, has, has removed and cleaned all relays in the circuit and restored service. So it should be up and running. But just in case that is a bad board, we have ordered a, we've overnighted a new relay starter board to install on elevator 11. It's totally unrelated to anything that had to do with 12. Just happened to be right beside it. Um, hard to believe, I know, but that is totally unrelated to 12 from what they're telling me. Um, so again, this part's been overnighted and um, it's working now, but we want to replace it so it doesn't stick anymore. So, so I think that is all. I don't know, I had a few other things here I was going to say. Um, yeah, and, and the last part of the question submitted was, will it be replaced? And I want, I want people to know that ultimately if something needs to be replaced at Springmore, we will replace it. It's, it's, not a, it's not that we don't have the money nor want to replace something. Our first, our first course of action is to fix the problem, and if it can be fixed and extend the life, that's, that's the first course of action. Um, in this case, um, we couldn't get a new elevator for five months, So, and I said that in the memo. So even if I said I wanted it now, 
we still have to live through this. So we're still having to do all we can to extend the life of that elevator. I think it can go much longer, um, but we'll have to see. But we're meeting with them next week to see um, a proposal to see what we have to do to modernize the elevator, and then we'll have to make a decision if that is the best um, best way, if we replace it. Um, but uh, but we'll, we'll figure that out once we have that meeting with them. So so I don't, I don't want people to think that we will not replace things. That's just not our first course of action as good stewards of funds and um, we want to try to fix those problems first. Okay, so lastly, um, the other question that's been talked about before, and I'll read this because this, I've only had two questions, is about bulk internet service. So a while back, had people ask, could we get a bulk price for the News and Observer? And I called them, and they didn't politely say. They just said, no, we're not going to do that. They didn't give me much I mean, they wasn't mean, but they were kind of short about it. That some of y'all been uh, paper for 50 years, and some of y'all have moved here and just had it for two years. So it's all on different schedules and all this stuff. So they would never do a bulk rate for you guys, for y'all. Excuse me. So, um, so we are trying to do this for the internet, but not everybody has the internet here at Springmore. So um, this was um, submitted by Mr. Ritter, and he says. Um, he respectfully requests that Springmore Management address the item of financial interest at the Resident Association meeting. Management is requested to negotiate a bulk internet contract allowing residents to opt in if interested in internet service for a substantially reduced fee. A year ago, my Spectrum bill was $45 a month, then it increased 33% to $60 a month. Sounds very familiar to me when I got moved here. Next month, it goes up another 15%. The bundle discount is $6. Um, he goes on to say, they add insult to injury by mailing our residents offers of 45 months, uh, $45 a month for TV and Internet. Um, it's on the back here. said, this may be their business model, although it was not disclosed when I signed up to Spectrum. However, 25% of residents list an email address in our directory. There are many more who do not list them like me, but use the Internet. Our collective internet users would qualify for a much better deal and would be able to continue to have our own modems for security. Campus-wide Wi-Fi is not the answer. If Spectrum will not provide a much better price consistently, the management is requested to secure an alternate internet provider who will. Media reports that President Biden has signed an executive order directing the FCC to end exclusive locked-in non-competitive internet deals for apartments like Springmore, so let's start here. So, um, so I've been in contact with our account representative, his guy named Kevin Armfield, and he is working on getting us a proposal for, um, for a bulk internet. And as soon as I have that information, I will make sure y'all know about it. Um, again, I realize not everybody has the internet, so what I'm going for is for people to get a bulk, a, a discounted price for the ones that do subscribe to it, since we have so many people that actually live here that have the internet. So that's what we're going for. Um, he's got to go up so many chains. I could write, it's kind of got bosses. He's got to get this stuff approved by, but he's working on it. And then I will, um, and as soon as I can find out um, what we can do, I'll let y'all know. And if there's nothing there, we'll see if there's anything else available. So we'll continue to work on that. And again, if y'all have any other questions that y'all would like to ask me any day this week or anything about budget or anything, you know, I'm always here. I'll be happy to help. So um, I, I do want to close on one thing. I thought about this today before Philip gets up here and, and he really blows you away with his presentation. Um, I realize it's been, we've talked about COVID a lot. It's been, it's been really tough and we've had COVID and we've had labor shortage and we've had world issues. We're struggling to mandate vaccines, which we did. I feel good about, but that's been a struggle, not been easy. And now COVID's back again. So it's just been it's just been very stressful. And a resident I was talking to the other day was saying that everybody just kind of seems to be just on the edge and worried about things. And and uh, and and I feel that. I mean, I feel that you know, just just in general, in myself, and just around the world. So um, I know it seems kind of tense right now. But um, this is really random. I got this quote today. There's a lady that used to work here, and she would send a quote every morning when she sends the daily report, which is just the update from the health center. If I see anybody had to go to the hospital, or they fall, I call and check on them. Um, 
she came back to work today and she sent this quote and I just thought it was really neat. It says, um, happy Monday, everyone. There are only two days in the year that nothing can be done. One is called yesterday and the other is called tomorrow. So today is the right day to love, believe, do, and mostly live. So I thought that was kind of neat to, to just kind of, kind of remember that. So we'll worry with it today, do the best we can and, um, keep believing. So, all right, Mr. Phillips. Good afternoon. So I've got a couple of topics I'm going to be going over with you this afternoon. The first one is going to be um, COVID, sorry, um, how COVID has impacted our financials for the current fiscal year, year to date. The second item I'm going to be discussing is the new meal plan or the meal plan comparisons, really. This is something that was introduced in May of last year, or this year, I'm sorry, and um, I'm sure there have been a lot of questions, and I'd like to try to answer some of them with the brief presentation on that. And the bulk of the presentation will, of course, be the 2022 budget, uh, how that's made up, and unfortunately, the rate increases that um, go along with it. So if we look at the cost of COVID, now this is, again, this uh, covers the period from January to August, which the August month uh, has already been closed. The additional cost so far that we have incurred as an organization is $161,000, actually almost $162,000. There are employee test costs for $210,000, some of which have been reimbursed. That's at the bottom of this slide. There's the PPE which is $29,000 of costs. We have cleaning supplies. Most of our supplies have increased all of our costs, plus all of the sanitation equipment that you see throughout the facility that we've added around the elevators, as an example. It's $26,000. And then we have incurred some hazard pay <clears throat> for Stewart Health Center staff, as needed, which is almost $9,000 for the first eight months of the year. There's also been some lost revenue opportunities, totaling $128,000, rounded up. Catering functions, almost $85,000, and guest room income, which is one of our 40-some-odd line items that we do plan, both of these, at uh, 43000 Now, the guest rooms have been back opened up. Catering functions are uh, back online certain to a certain extent, but still not the way they were. And a lot of this is, of course, lost revenue because we're not going to get it back. There have been some cost savings that we have in wages, food service and transportation, approximately 30,000. There have been activities which have been postponed or delayed to the tune of 35,000. Employee education and training, and that's unfortunate that we don't have that, and that's $10,000. Vehicles, $9,000. And as I mentioned earlier, the employee test cost contribution or return of that from the um, DHHS, which is $78,000. Now, there is still an outstanding balance of $127,000 that we have put claims into the, uh, to the government for testing reimbursement costs. We're following up with them weekly on it. They don't give us a tentative date of when we can expect the check, but we are hopeful that we will get these costs reimbursed. Unfortunately, after June, the end of June, the government is no longer reimbursing us for mandatory testing. So when we were back in outbreak status in the month of August, all the testing costs, $100 per employee, we had to absorb no reimbursement for those type of expenses, unfortunately, moving forward. The meal plans. As I mentioned in May, we introduced the second meal plan option. And I'd just like to go over the two different plans 
very high level, but just to give you a general idea. On the left-hand side of the slide, you see our regular meal plan, both single and below that, double occupancy. And on the right-hand side of the chart, you see the reduced meal plan, which is the new plan, both single and double occupancy. If we look at the regular meal plan, included in your monthly service fee, we have for next year, which starts August 1, uh, October 1, we have $488 worth of an allowance per individual for the meal plan per month. You're allowed a maximum carryover of one month, or 30 days, so $488. There is no credit, if you continue on this plan, there is no credit to your monthly service bill. Any amounts that you incur in excess of the $488 will appear on your monthly billing statement. If you wish to stay on this plan, there's no action required. And the renewal date, as I indicated, is October 1. If you look at double occupancy, going down to the bottom of the slide, the meal plan allowance is $976. You are allowed one month, 30-day carryover, so $976. There is no credit billing at the start of the month when you get your monthly service bill. And no action is required, and it takes effect October 1st. The reduced meal plan, going to the right of the slide on top. You're looking at $348 allowances for meals at the start of each month. There is no carryover month to month in this plan. So if you do not use your $348, uh, $342, there is no carryover. You start off with the $342 balance. There is a credit of $146 applied to your monthly service bill at the first of the month. Any amounts that you consume over that balance, the 342, will appear on your monthly billing statement. You must sign up during the sign up period, which is now during the month of September. And of course the renewal will be October 1st going to the bottom right of the slide, you have reduced meal plan double occupancy, you have $684 for meal allowances, you have zero carryover, you have a $292 credit on your monthly billing, any overages will be charged. You are currently in the enrollment period and the plan starts October 1st. Now, there's something I haven't mentioned here, and we have been receiving some calls, and it's a change in our computer program. Um, we don't like it, and I gather some of you don't like it at, uh, as well, and it is a bit confusing. You, some of you have called and said, why does my, when I scan my meal card, why does it tell me I'm not on the plan? Or something to that effect. What that means is you've exceeded your monthly allowance. And the system basically is telling you, you have no longer a credit. So any, when you see that message, that will mean any meals that you incur by swiping your card will be automatically charged on your next monthly service bill. Now we get to the budget. The 2022 budget, I'm going to be covering the operating budget goals, significant changes from this year to next year, total operating revenues, how we define revenues and what's included, how each dollar is budgeted, Springmore operating budget summary, the 2022 rate increases, and then also the historical rate increases over the last 15 years. Looking at our budget process, it takes me about three and a half months to complete from start to finish the total budget process. Our department heads 
have about six to eight weeks worth of work that they are involved in in the budget process as well. We start at the end of March and we go through until it is presented to the board in October. The MAC is also involved in the process and about a month of that time is carved out for the MAC where we do our preliminary presentation to the MAC, the MAC meets with every department head and then reports back to us. We incorporate recommend recommendations or requests, we consider them and then meet with senior management to finalize the budget and then present it to the board. The reviews that we go through is both a top-down and a bottom-up. In other words, we look at our revenue streams, of which there are over 40, and we look at all of our expense line items. And there can be up to 60 different line items, depending on the size of the budget. Randy's probably got the largest. Our approach, because we are a not-for-profit, is a zero-based budget. And of course, the intent here is we're spending your money. And we know that. So we're trying to be good stewards with your funds. What are some of the significant changes in 2022 budget versus 2021 actual? The first line item I'd like to mention is the revenue decrease in the Stewart Health Center. Now we're licensed for 191 beds. That does not mean that you will find 191 beds if you count it out, but that's what we are licensed for. Last year, we were budgeting at an occupancy level of 115 residents. We found that to be totally unrealistic in light of some of the things that happened in the fall. And right now, we're at 90 residents. We based our budget on 100 residents. That's a decrease of 13%. And that is one of the key contributors that impacts the overall cost and the increase that we're going to incur for next year. We have been able to reduce some costs in the Stewart Health Center. Building is what it is. I'm sorry, I cannot change that. However, we have asked every department head to look at their expenses. And the Stewart Health Center was able to reduce their overall staffing based on the occupancy that we project. And that represents over $300,000 in labor savings. Now, some of that is offset, of course, due to increases, but that was the starting point. And I think they've done an excellent job preparing their budget. Home care costs and revenues are down almost 8%. This is partially due or predominantly due to staffing challenges that we have in that group. There has been some comments made, well, I'm not using home care, why am I paying for it? You're not. If you use home care, you get charged for home care. If you do not use it, there is no charge for it. It is cost covering. So only those people that use the service pay for the service. And I think it's an excellent service. Food service costs. We're actually projecting a decrease of 5.9% year over year. And then this is due to two primary reasons. The first is the reduction, the planned reduction, in occupancy in the health center. The reduction of 15 individuals means that we can plan for 16,500 less meals at the average meal price. The new meal plan. 100 individuals signed up for the meal plan in May. We don't know the total number yet, but based on the 100 individuals, we estimate a reduction of 18,500 meals that the kitchen needs to prepare. The reason why we are able to reduce the meal cost is for the raw food cost. Unfortunately, the infrastructure stays as is, but we've tried to be fair the real difficulty is trying to plan when these 100 individuals are going to show up or not. And that the kitchen still has to prepare all options of food so that we don't get you upset. 
because the menu item that you're looking to have isn't available. So they, they have their challenges with this two meal plan options. Security costs are going up by 4.6%. This is due to a change in the uh, method of staffing. We're taking a look at um, trying to have more constant uh, staffing. We have new management there as well. Resident life services are 3.8% uh, cost increase. This is due to direct services that you as residents are util utilizing. Marketing costs is going up 4.2%. Part of that is due to the fact that we can do all of the marketing, a lot more marketing activities again. We're planning not to be restricted under COVID. Reserve funding. Our cost for reserve funding is going up 12.7%. Now, you can say, well, great. Go get me a new elevator. Uh, yes, if we need a new elevator, that's exactly where it comes from. We build the reserve. We have approximately $3.7 million in our reserve fund, and we need it, and we want it there. We need to make sure that those funds are maintained at all times. Some of the planned items and expenses that we have for the reserves, compressor repair and replacements for our chillers, exterior painting, of North Village, new carpeting in the hallways, new roofs for the houses and villas, and new roofs for Creedmoor and Valley. They're over 20 years old. Now, whether they will all be done at the beginning of the year, how they're planned, don't know. But those are some of the highlight items that you know, maintenance has said we need to look at. We have to have sufficient funds there at all times to cover these expenses, oh, and the unforeseen as well. As far as our revenues are concerned, if we go clockwise from the largest line item around the clock, independent living makes up 60.5% of our total revenues. This is through the monthly service fees. This year, we're planning for $11.1 .1 million worth of revenue from that line item. And that compares to $18.2 million last year, so almost a million dollar increase after the fee increases. Going around the chart, the next line item is Stewart Health Center with $10.2 .2 million worth of revenue planned. We had planned $10.9 million. So you can see right off the bat, there's a shortfall compared to last year. And by the way, we're not going to hit $10.9 million this year. I'm 200,000 short per month. So best case scenario, I will be $2 million short. That's a, that's a revenue shortfall, but that translates into a cash issue. Our next line item is home care. Home care generates, for the next year's budget, $926,000. Last year, it was just over a million, almost 1.1 to be exact. The bulk of the line items, about 38 to 40 line items, are budgeted at $1.4 million worth of revenue for the next year. If we look at the expense line item, again going clockwise, this is how your budget or how your dollars are spent in the budget. 22 cents per dollar goes to the Stewart Health Center. Food services contributes 19 cents per dollar. Our reserves are 18 cents per dollar spent. General operating, and that includes things like our audit fees, it includes all of our utilities, um, uh, payroll processing fees, things of that nature that we do not allocate or assign to the individual departments is 12 cents. Our housekeeping budget is about six cents for every dollar. Buildings, excluding reserve line items, is also six cents. And then we have our admin, which is four cents. And all the other categories add up to another 13 cents in total. If you look at it a little bit differently, 
This is the same information, just stacked from top to bottom in a somewhat different fashion, maybe better for some of you to understand or to follow. And the 13 cents, of course, is broken down where you see marketing at three cents, wellness and home care at three, security at two, activities, resident services, and hairstyling at two, and clinic and outpatient services at two, and then grounds at one. Another point I'd like to make on, on hairstyling, this is one of the few line items that is actually a fee for service. The individuals that do the hairstyling and manicure pedicures, they're contractors. Again, if you use the service, you pay for the service. We include the cost of what we calculate, but there's also a revenue line item that offsets the expenses. So if you don't use the service, you're not paying for it. Only if you use it. And it's a convenience, and many of you do utilize the service, and please also keep in mind the health center utilizes those services as well. If we look at the budget, we're planning revenues next year of $31.6 million. On the expense side, salaries, almost 58% of our expenses are salary driven. That's salaries and benefits of $18.2 million. And I'm rounding up just you know, to advise everybody. Total revenues is our next single line largest line item, which is 12.7% or almost $4 million in next year's budget. Sodexo and raw food cost Sodexo is a, is a contract servicer that we have, is $2.54 million, or 8.1% of our total expenditures. Looking at, at our utilities, it's almost $1.4 million, gas, water, sewer, electric, and garbage, 4.4%. The balance of the line items make up 16.9%, or $5.3 million. Total operating expenses, $31.4 million. That leaves us this time with a small profit of $200,000. We are a not-for-profit. It gets rolled back into the business. But please keep in mind, there are a number of significant variables. We made this decision full well knowing that A, Stewart Health Center is not at the occupancy level that we need and that we have budgeted. We hope we will get there. Second, cost of COVID. Although we have included cost increases that our suppliers are passing on to us, if we have to continue testing, those costs have to be covered. They are not included. We don't know. It's a variable. So those are the type of things that we're a bit uncertain with and the decision was made to go just a slight bit higher, 0.15% approximately, on your service fee to give us a little bit of wiggle room to make sure that we do not fall short as we are falling short this year. As I alluded and has already been communicated to you in the, in the memo, our rates for next year across the board will be 5.2%. I'm sure many of you are interested in seeing, well, how does that compare? Well, here's your comparison. Over the past 15 years, independent living, our average rate increase, average rate increase is 3.4%. Stewart Health Center rate increase averages out at 3.9%. As you can see, we've had three other years where the rate increases in the Stewart Health Center have also been above or around the 5% range. Um, that concludes my presentation. And if you have any questions, Thank you.
you want to close it out? That's, that's, that, that's all we have. It's right, almost right at four. Exactly almost at four. All right. Motion that we adjourn. We adjourn. We are officially adjourned. Thank you so much for coming, for being attentive, and for keeping your masks on. Thank you.